All right, module seven, we're getting to the end here. Um, we've taken all the steps and now we are ready to start interviewing. We're starting to get some attention from our resume, from our networking, and because of our experience. So you might have found a job that's not open yet, that's coming, or a job just now got posted on LinkedIn or MedReps, um, and you're ready to take action. You're not just gonna sit there and wait for someone to call you. Like that's, that's not the way this works. All right, so what I usually do, uh, what, I, what I suggest is if you find a job that's with um, Striker Endoscopy, whatever it might be, now is when you hop on LinkedIn, find those connections and send them a message. And so this is like a little sample message I put together um, for someone if they were reaching out to me, like if there was an opening on my team. And, you know, first of all, it says a lot that they're going out of their way and reaching out to me and they know about the position. That means they're just kind of on their A game. And immediately I see, you know, this nice message. I see that they have appropriate experience. And then I see that they've made this message specific for me. They haven't just copied and pasted this and send it to everybody. Like it says, I'm excited about new technologies in spine. They obviously know I'm in spine. Um, and they want to see if uh, they have a little bit of time. So they've gone out of their way. This is the kind of person I would want on my team. And so you would say, I would reply back and be like, yeah, no problem. Um, call me between two and four tomorrow. I don't have cases. Um, here's my phone number and you would hop on that call and start asking about, you know, the activities of the job, what they're looking for and all that kind of fun stuff. Just kind of have a real good, um, kind of 20,000 feet up conversation. Um, now just to be aware, I mean, this is kind of pre-planning for all of this stuff is, uh, you're going to have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are because they're going to come up. So um, if you don't know them, I made a little message down here to ask some of your good friends, people that are close to you. They might have some good suggestions for you because it's kind of hard um, to think about and they might bring bring it out of you. Um, you know, this just shows good awareness that you have strengths and weaknesses and don't just say something cookie cutter like I'm a perfectionist, like take it to another level, be a little bit more specific. Um, I think weakness is probably always the hardest one. So I put a little example on here and said, you know, having little patience while working with a team because you're very self-sufficient and thrive working independently. Um, most of these medical device jobs are solo territories. Sometimes there's a team or something like that, but um, I think that's a pretty good answer there because a manager doesn't want someone they're going to have to babysit and that's calling and asking every question, you know, what should I do today and you know stuff like that. So um, make sure that they know that you are you love figuring things out on your own and you're self-sufficient. All right, so something to be thinking about on every step of this is to have follow-up. So in my example from that message that um, you know I hypothetically received on LinkedIn, say we had that conversation at 2 to 4 p.m. the next day and it went great and you're excited about it, um, make sure you text them or send them an email like later that night or first thing in the morning and just say, thank you so much for your time. I'm so excited about this opportunity. Um, you know, anything else that you think might be pertinent based on your conversation. Um, this is the same for every step of the way. I mean, it, when you get the face-to-face -face interview with the manager, you're going to want to thank them for their time and let them know why you're the right person. And... I've even taken follow-up to a whole whole nother level and try to be thinking of things like this as well. So in my interview for my job that I have now, while we were in the interview, the manager was holding one of these pens. And this is, um, this is a Pilot G2 uh, number 10. And I was like, do you always use that pen? 
And he's like, this is the only pen I'll use. And I knew it because I use the same pen. I will not use any other pen. It, these come in G2 number 10 and number 7. The number 10s tend to bleed a little bit more, which I like. And so it's just an interesting thing to talk about. And I was like, I, I absolutely love those pens. Do you use that pen every day or do you just happen to have it in your bag? And he was like, no, I love these. So after the interview, I went on whitepages.com, looked up my manager's name and found his address and then sent him a brand new box of those pens. And it was just, I mean, he's never had anyone do anything like that before. And that just shows, you know, what kind of salesperson you're going to be getting that remembers those kind of conversations and is going to be good with doctors and, and clients. Um, and he was just blown away. And I didn't preemptively plan that or anything. I just went above and beyond. So be thinking about those kind of things. All right, so now we've gotten to the interview. We've talked to a recruiter. That's usually the first step, recruiter for the company or an outside recruiter. And the recruiter is going to walk you through, they're going to ask you to walk you through your resume. And basically you just start at college and you talk about, you know, why you excelled in college and a little bit about that. And then talk about your jobs. You know, what made you so good at those jobs, what you did great, and then why you went on to a, a, a different position and try to make it all cohesive like you were you know you, why like you had a plan um that got you to where you are now and then the, then you'll probably even have a phone interview now especially with covid you'll probably have a phone interview with the manager and that might be even before you have a face-to-face -face interview so um be prepared just like you would for um the in-person interview now, the in-person interview is usually going to be at like a hotel, maybe even an airport hotel. You know, a lot of these guys, like my manager lives in Indianapolis. Like there would be, there's a chance that I, he would just want to be in and out. And I would be going to the airport hotel, the airport Hilton and, um, you know, having lunch or just having a sit down interview. And so... These are kind of simple, but worth going over. Make sure you're like at least 30 minutes early. I mean, if you're late to an interview, you're not going to get the job, period. You're disqualified. You didn't take it serious. You didn't leave enough time in advance, and it's over. Um, don't smell like anything. Don't smell like smoke or any, you know, this is duh. I mean, don't have things in your teeth. Um, wear a suit. Nothing too flashy. You don't want a super tight suit with some pastel tie. You keep it simple, charcoal, navy. Because again, this isn't a fashion contest. Doctors don't care about that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're female, wear just like a nice black dress. We've talked about it before, but have multiple copies of your resume and have your brag book and just be confident. Um, you know, always treat all this stuff as a learning experience. It, it, if you don't get the job, it's not the end of the world. Um, but just be confident in yourself and maintain eye contact. Just know that, you know, interview is not fun for anybody. So your competition, they're going to be going into it with sweaty palms and nervous, just like you. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's just one of those uncomfortable parts of life. So, um, just be confident and, and try to have a little fun with it. Um, because it, you know, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. Main thing here with these medical device interviews, you know, you're going to, you're going to get there. You're going to shake hands. You're going to sit down. You're going to do some pleasantries. You're going to talk about how the day's going. You're going to ask him, you know, if, if he's traveling, you probably already know from the recruiter, like, oh, he's coming from Indianapolis. And then, you know, just do some pleasantries. Just, oh, you a huge Colts fan, blah, blah, blah before you're gonna dive into um, these interview questions. And so most of these interviews from pharmaceuticals to medical device are all going to be these star interview questions where they're gonna ask you a question and you're going to answer by telling them oh, something that you did from the past. You tell them about a situation, the task that was required, and then what you did, what you did, focus on that, and then the result that happened. 
Practice this in front of a mirror. The best way to do this is to think of 10 situations and write this down. Get a notebook and just go over it. Fine tune it. Make it more impressive than it was. Whatever you need to do. But have those 10 situations in your head. So whatever question that they bring to you, because a lot of them are kind of similar. So you don't, the, the worst feeling is only having like one or two stories because they're going to ask you a question and you're going to be, you know, kind of scrambling and you're going to be like, damn, I feel like I just answered that with my last answer. You got to be able to, to go back and have a couple So here's some common ones, you know, why this job and why this company, you know, have some insight, you know, have been studied their website, know how they're doing financially. You know, this isn't something that everyone that's 22 years old thinks of, but you need to, and, and you can get someone to help you. I mean, it's fine. Like have an idea of how the company is performing in general. So you can touch on that. Um, and then be able to speak on, any, you know, maybe any new technology, say, um, you know, based on my research, the new technology and whatever, whatever product it is, say, I'd be really excited to sell something like that. Um, a lot of these are going to be like, you know, tell me about a time that you overcame an obstacle to get a result. So... Again, this all goes back to those 10 things. Now, you can look at all these and make up your answers, but I think the best way is to just have those 10 stories. Tell me a time when you had to mentor someone. I mean, just be a go-getter. I mean, have a story ready for this, whether you've done it or not. Say we had a new hire and you didn't know them, but you went to the manager and said, hey, um, I think I can be an asset to help them develop faster. I, I want to volunteer to be their mentor. So say you volunteered to mentor the newest hire. Um, whether that happened or not, you know, again, the, the, they're not going to be drilling you on every little question about that, but they want to show that you had initiative. That's what we're going for is we're selling ourselves in an interview. This guy or this gal had enough initiative to ask their manager to help mentor someone. That's the bottom line, or at least that you're thinking along those lines. Tell me a time when you had a challenge, a challenging customer. You know, talk about how you had a difficult customer and how it started off rocky and how you ended up with a sale. I mean, just be thinking of, of what they're looking for. So yeah, ask for the job. This is what we talked about every step of the way. Ask for the next step in the process. Do you have any hesitations on moving me forward? I'm passionate about this job and this company. Is there anything that you have questions about? Tell them why you're the right person. Um, you know, you're, you're passionate about having big achievements in this role. Like you, you don't just want to get in there and do an okay job. I mean, put yourself in this manager's position. They're hiring a new person from outside the company. They want to hire the next rock star that's going to make them look awesome. I mean, that that's all there is to it. Like, that's how you would be. Think about, put just put yourself in their position and think about what they're, what they're going for. And then at the very end, in this the final interview, ask for the job. You know, even if it's the even if you've gotten past what you thought was the final interview, just ask for that job. That's what they want. They want a salesperson. They're gonna know it's coming. They're gonna want to hear it because this is no different than going up to a doctor. You don't want that salesperson to say, "Hey, look at this." Um, okay, well, have a great day. Hope you'll use it. Like they want you to close. Say, this is a perfect product for your um, X Y Z patient. You know they might like say obese uh, diabetic patient. This is a perfect product for that. Would you use this on that next patient that comes to your clinic? That's closing. You got to close for the job, just like you would close for a sale. So that's really it for the course. Um, 
I feel like you are super prepared. You have every tool that you need now to get one of these jobs. And just remember, I mean, I was, I just a few years back, I was a recruiter making $30,000 a year, just sitting in a cubicle wondering where my life was going to go. And because I had unwavering faith and took this extra effort, I was able to get here. And you got to just work every day to try to fine tune everything we talked about. Um, think every day about the job that you're doing, do as best as you can. Um, but then treat this as your other job. Like think of like the one thing, the one or two things. What do I need to get done today? What do I need to do? I need to check med reps. Do I need to follow up with someone? Do I need to get on LinkedIn and, and look up this new company and who the reps are in the area? Um, do I need to talk to um, so and so that was in my fraternity that got in? Like every day, there should be one or two things you think you need to do. Do I need to work a little on my brag book? Do I need to think of another five or another two or three um, stories that I could use for star answers? Um, you'll get this all together and you'll be ready to rock. And like I said, this isn't piano in 21 days. It's going to take a while. But this is worth it because over the course of your career, you could literally make millions of dollars. And so this is this is worth it. This is worth the extra effort. I assure you, this is the very top of the sales world and something you can be super proud to say that you do in the kind of companies that you work for. So I'm here for a resource. You can always email me, Facebook group. Um, whatever it might be, I'm super happy to help because I'm passionate about this. I'm not just passionate about um, what I do every day in my sales job, but I'm passionate about helping people and passionate about this path to medical sales because it changed my life. And I'm so um, happy at where I've gotten and I want you to be here with me. So uh, can't wait to hear from you and um, you know how you're progressing. So I wish you the best of luck and can't wait to hear your successes.